Hi, it's time to record a new video and this time I'm going to compare the United States with Canada and I don't like I usually try to show the similarities between the two countries before I go into the differences but if I were to do that between these two countries it will take up half the video and I don't really I, I just really don't want to do that okay so I'm not I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna jump straight to the differences Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this as a joke, uh, but <laughs> I'm actually quite serious. And if you are going through the map and you're not sure whether or not you're in the United States or if you're in Canada, if you don't see an American flag, you're probably in Canada. The thing is with the Americans is that they really like their own flag and... Uh, <laughs> They do, so if, if you don't see a bunch of American flags everywhere, you're probably in Canada. <laughs> in on contrast, uh, Canada really likes to put maple leaves on logos. It's quite adorable, but they do that a lot. So if you see maple leaves, it's Canada. But those two, these two differences are very obvious and you probably already knew them without me telling you that those are the differences. If you play a lot of GeoGuessr, you probably already know about this, but if you don't, I'm gonna tell you. And in the United States, they use miles per hour, and in Canada, they use kilometers. And they, often you can see that on the speed signs, not only because of the numbers, because the numbers in kilometers will almost always be obviously very high compared to miles per hour. Uh, but in the USA, the signs say speed limit. And in Canada, they will say maximum speed. But do not they don't always list kilometers or miles per hour on the sign. Sometimes it's just a number. Uh, but kilometers almost obviously too high if you're American. Like for Americans, they will think the number is too high. For example, the rural speeds are usually 90 to 110 in uh, most areas, depending on road quality. Uh, residencies, traffic volumes, and other things. Uh, and urban speeds are usually 50 to 80. And uh, if you were in the States, the numbers would look very different. There is one really fun exception though, and it's this weird road in Arizona uh, that actually has kilometers on the signs. Uh, and that's the only sign in the entire United States that will have that. And it's probably because it's going through Mexico, and uh, it's this one. I'll show you. Here you go. Road 19 will have kilometers for some reason. Okay, Canada, Canada, Canada. Uh, in Canada, you don't usually have your mailboxes outside of your home. Uh, they have boxes like these. And this is Canada Post with the typical Canada Post logo on the side. And this is where people collect their posts. And uh, here's a box where you drop off your post, wherever it's going. These are usually found uh, around a lot of like apartment complexes and uh, that type of area. In the United States though, um, if you're around my age, maybe you're not. Anyway, I grew up playing The Sims. And uh, in The Sims, they have mailboxes just like this one. And uh, so that's my first thought whenever I see these. But these are uh, American mailboxes. They also have uh, like boxes where you can drop off your post, wherever it's going. And this is for USPS. They're blue. So the red mailboxes are usually for Canada Post and the blue ones are for the States. Quite easy to tell the difference. If you see a stop sign, like this one that says Are, I think. I, I, I don't speak French. But it looked like that. And uh, then you're in Quebec, probably. And if it says both stop and Are, you're not in Quebec, but you're probably in New Brunswick. Uh, possibly the capital, Ottawa, too. But because um, that place also has a lot of uh, bilingual language. But, well, the United States will never have a. Uh, a French stop sign. Here's one in New Brunswick where you can see both the words. You'll never see those in the States, I promise you. Very rarely you might see uh, stop signs with native languages on them. And this is one in Canada. 
Um, I'm pretty sure it's the indigenous people called the Mohawk. I don't remember what the language was called, but this is a Canadian one. This is one of the ones you can see. There's another one as well. Here is one in Ontario. It's quite, quite cool. I kind of like that, that they have that. And here you have a, an American one. And uh, this language over here is Cherokee. So you can see some stop signs with Cherokee written on them. I think, I think that's really cool. I kind of like that you do that. Here is a end of road sign that's very specific for Canada. They look like this. They're quite cool. And uh, yeah, they signify that you're at the end of a road. They have uh, two types of uh, like checkered signs. But this, um, this one shows that you can go both directions. Here's one in Quebec. Looks like this. And here is one in Newfoundland and Labrador. When you end up at an end of a road, the American signs will say dead end. Look like this. You can see it there in the distance. It's hiding over there. Canada, as I said, uses no exit signs or this checkered cool little thingy. Alright. When it comes to places you're not allowed to park, um, in Canada they usually just write a P with the, um, like, don't go here um, thing around it. Uh, but American one will probably say no parking. In general, American signs are a little bit more wordy than the can Canadian ones. So if it's like written, like no parking, it's probably the United States. And if it looks more like this, it's probably Canada. Same goes for yield signs. Um, yield signs with like yield written inside of them are American. Canada leaves them empty, like X-shaped. Same goes for X-shaped railway sign crossing that says railway crossing written inside are American. And Canada leaves them empty. Uh, and one-way signs are usually a white arrow with a black background in Canada. And in the US they usually say one way written in them. As I said, if the signs are wordy, they're probably American. I have found one exception to the rule though, and this is one in British Columbia, Canada, where it says yield on the inside. Usually a sign, a sign that looks like this is American. But this is an Ameri one in America. It looks like this. And the Canadian one usually looks like this. This website is cool. Here you have a Canadian railway crossing. This one would literally say railway crossing on the inside if it was an American one. Why don't I have any examples of this? Okay, I found this. Okay, I, I found this. Uh, it says railway crossing here for the American one and it says yield on the inside for the American one. And here you have the Canadian one where it's just a cross and here when it doesn't say yield on the inside. There you have the differences. American signs are way more wordy than the Canadian ones. Here you have some American no parking signs. As I said, most like they just they're quite wordy. They like telling you words. Except this one. Hmm. Well, most of the time they will tell you that you cannot park. They're also way more colorful than the ones in Here you have the Canadian ones. They are not nearly as colorful as the one in the United States. So there you go. These uh, are also specific for the United States. Canada does not have this sign at all. As I mentioned before, Canada really likes their maple leaves. And uh, for the national roads, the big ones, the national highway signs in Canada, they have maple leaves around them. And in the US, they will just have like a, a shield or a silhouette of the state that you're in. Uh, and this little warning post for underground fiber optic cables in Virginia, Virginia, USA. These are America specific. If you see those, you're in the States. Well, language. Um... Okay, when it comes to language, uh, well, Canada, they speak both English and French depending on where you are. Uh, a lot of Canadian signs have both French and English. 
uh, some are required to, I think, actually. Uh, you will never see that in the US. Some areas near the Mexican border have signs in both English and Spanish, but it's already obvious by the entirety of the landscape that you are not in Canada. It's too dry and warm. And uh, Canadians use British spellings for a lot of words like center, neighborhood, and American signs will say center and neighborhood without the extra U or O's or you, you usually, you, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I should also note that when talking about their native people, Canadians call their indigenous people First Nations, and the US often calls them Native Americans or American Indians. As far as I know, the terms are mutually exclusive to each country. Tell me, let me know if I'm wrong, actually, because I, I, I'm not American or Canadian, so I, I don't know. So, when ending up in Canada, you will probably see more birch and uh, poplar trees. Um, there's more tree cover in general at all, and more green looking environment. Um, it's mo most likely to be Canada if it's like that. And if it's barren plains, it's usually probably Canada as well. Uh, Canada is generally just more spread out and inhabited. If it looks like a north-ish part of the US, but it's barely any buildings or cars around, it could be Canada. And sometimes Canada just looks downright like Scandinavia. And uh, when it comes to the American landscape, if you see cornfields, it's usually the US, because most part it's almost too cold to grow corn up in Canada. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there are no cornfields in Canada. There are cornfields in Canada. Uh, they do grow wheat, though, mostly. Uh, the farther north you go, uh, the fewer leafy trees you will see. And if you see, uh, well, palm trees, it's definitely US. Also, if it's starting to look very dry and more like Mexico... <laughs> it, it's not Canada. It's... <laughs> it's not Canada, okay? What I personally noticed, though, is that the US has a lot of churches. And uh, I see them almost all the time. So usually when I see a church, it's the States. That doesn't mean that Canada doesn't have churches. Canada has a lot of churches, but most of them are abandoned. Because um, I, I, maybe people are not as religious anymore. I don't know. Here is a Canadian, actually abandoned church. It's quite pretty though. I just wanted to show it. <laughs> But most of the time, if you see a bunch of churches, it's probably the US, because they, they're quite religious in the States. Parts of the States is very religious. I'm, I'm not sure to generalize, but yeah. I can already see all their angry Americans in my uh, comments going... Um, if you see a Tim Hortons, you're in Canada. It's a restaurant chain, I believe. And they're very common to see around Canada. I should also mention that Canada does not have Target, Kmart, Barnes & Noble, White Castle, Sonic, Carl's Jr., Whataburger, Olive Garden, Cheese Factory, mostly, and Dunkin' Donuts. So if you see those places, it's United States for you. In the US, you will sometimes have absolutely trash potato looking microwave quality camera. It used to be mostly around North and South Dakota, but they got a lot of Gen 4 coverage uh, recently. Uh, and this one is in Tennessee, but it can show up pretty much wherever, uh, but it's in the States. Here's quite bad cam around Canada. I actually struggled to find that. Uh, so. That being said, so usually when you see a really bad cam, it's the States. This one is in British Columbia. When it comes to gas prices, uh, in the United States, the gas prices are in dollars per gallon. Uh, so they be like like lower looking prices, like $2.99 or $4.20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the prices will usually look like that, lower. In Canada, the prices are written in cents per liter. Uh, so the prices would be more like it's uh, 210 here for wait 210 and 30 But yeah, the prices are higher or higher. They look higher 
when it comes to roads, I, I read a thing on Reddit and I don't fully understand it entirely myself, but I will read it. A single solid central line is not legally used in the US at all on normal roads. I actually looked up the official codes. If you have a divided highway, you will find a single line in the US because the other line is on the opposite lane. The other big exception is freeway ramps where a single yellow line is on your left. The reason for this is that single solid central line means passing is allowed with extreme caution in Canada. This concept does not exist in the US with few exceptions. You either have a passing allowed, in which case you have a dashed central line, or a passing prohibited solid double yellow. Here you have, sub sol uh. Here you have a solid double yellow in the United States. In my experience, a solid double yellow line is also very common in, in Canada. It's not a strong indicator that you are in the States. Here's one in Quebec. So, uh, Canadian traffic lights have yellow front and back um, with a big yellow backboard. While American traffic signs vary from state to state, none match the Canadian ones. Here you can see the front of them. They look like this. I should though mention that in Quebec, the street lights are sometimes horizontal and sometimes have a black uh, casing instead of yellow. Okay, <clears throat> in Quebec though, uh, the street lights are horizontal and sometimes have a black casing instead of a yellow one. They look like this. That's the exception. Otherwise, uh, you have a yellow casing. Knowing the provincial flags can be useful as they tend to be a bit more common overall than just seeing the Canadian flag on its own. So you see a flag with the Union Jack. No, it might be a Canadian province rather than a UK based flag. Uh, also Manitoba and Ontario's flags are almost identical. So look at the coat of arms of them to know the difference. Here you have them. They look like this. Here are the ones you can see. And here's the Manitoba Ontario one. As you can see, they're, they're really similar. Also, um, I haven't listed bollards, which I usually do, and um, it's because they are a lot of them, and it's kind of hard to find like one that's different from the other. It's not that easy, uh, but most of us that play GeoGuessr know about the Alberta bollards, and this is one of them. I just wanted to show you that. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm sorry it took a while, um, but here it is. I hope this helps you finding out the difference between the US and Canada. And if you know anything that I missed or if I did any mistake, as usual, please tell me down below and please tell me what you want to see next. And uh, otherwise, I hope you guys have a lovely day and take care of yourselves. Bye.